Hey, House Churches, this is Scott. It's the week of April 7th. I want to welcome you to the weekly. Uh, this week, we talked through Acts chapter 22, where Paul is confronting a hostile crowd. And he would, we would think this crowd that wants to kill him, he would give some elaborate sermon uh, with apologetics and, and talking about Christ and all these different things. But instead, he gives his personal testimony and he does it in a very powerful way. And so, what I did on Sundays, I wanted to look at that and parallel that to how do we as everyday Christians tell our story. Okay guys, so uh, on Sunday we focused mostly on the first 15 verses of Acts chapter 22. And it's where Paul is facing this hostile crowd. Now this crowd wants to have him killed. Uh, they want to kill him and he starts off and he talks about, uh, I, it baffles my mind because he could talk about all kinds of things, but he talks about his sin in the past. He talks about before he was transformed by Christ and talks about how he persecuted uh, God's people. He was an enemy of God. And so he outlines how he had Christians arrested. He had them beaten. He had some even killed and oversaw. He mentions he oversaw the uh, killing of Stephen which is just blows your mind. And so as he talks about that, what I tried to highlight is that we as Christians, there's a principle in what he's doing in sharing his ceremony, his uh, testimony, but we as Christians should share our testimony by leading first with our humanity. And so when I talked about that, what I wanted to do is provide a template for us to share our testimony so I provided uh, this, these three steps in sharing our testimony, before, how, and after. I, I even think, and I kind of want to challenge each and every one of you to write that out. Like take out a journal, take out a piece of paper, open a Word doc, your notes on your iPhone. Before, what was your life like before Christ? That's what Paul is doing in these first verses in chapter 22. He's talking about all what he was like before he met Christ, before he was transformed by Christ. And I liked, I, I wanted to say before is like sharing your sin and your past, your shame, the trauma, things you've done and failed at and sinned, but also things done to you. What does that before look like? And, and I know that's easier said than done. It's hard to expose ourselves, but I think it's important to be authentic and to lead with our humanity. And then the how, the how verses six to 11, uh, Paul then talks about how he was met on the road to Damascus by Christ, and it, it's a miraculous event, something that you and I don't really experience, our conversion story, right? Uh, but Jesus talks to him, this bright light came down from heaven and went all around him, and he fell to the ground. And in this moment, Jesus says, like, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he just can't believe it. And he says, you, Lord, and he responds. And they have this interaction. And Jesus tells them to keep going to Damascus. He has to even be led by the hand because he's blind because of the light. A crazy, crazy story. That's hard to relate to. But you and I have a different conversion story, right? So in the how process, what is the season? What was the event? How and when did the gospel really begin to resonate in your soul and in your heart and in your mind? What happened or who uh, spoke to you and spoke in a way that was so compelling that you placed your faith and life in Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior and started walking with Him? What is that how? And then after, after is like, what is your life like after you met Christ walking as a Christian? Now, I, I give a warning here because I don't want us as Christians to present ourselves as picture perfect or, uh, you know, like we, we, we're holy and other people are not, non-Christians are not. It's just not real. We all have struggles. We all still sin. And we need to be authentic about that. However, you can talk about the peace that God gives you. Now that you're saved, you have eternal peace because you're not seeking uh, temporal happiness. You could talk about things like that. And so before, how, and after I think is important. I think maybe you should think through your story and what that looks like. Another key component is uh, I, I wanted to stress that there's no before. Number one, everyone has a before story. Even if you, you really believe in your heart of hearts you were saved at an early age, before you were born spiritually dead. And so nothing is boring when, because the gospel is not boring. When the gospel 
touched your life, you were dead before and now you're made alive. And so there, that's not a boring story. In fact, it's not boring. If you grew up in church and you're like, I don't really have this big dramatic story before I met Christ. It's not boring to say, I looked at the world and I saw all that it had to offer. And I looked at God and I saw all that it had to offer. And I chose to walk with my creator, with my savior. That is powerful. That's unusual. And so because of that, it's powerful. Another point I made is that every Christian has a story, but it's you don't own your story. God owns your story, so let him use it. So you have to give it away. In other words, don't make your story all about you. I talked about the woman at the well in John 4 and how after her interaction with the Lord and how Jesus told her everything about herself, she ran to town and to tell her testimony of what happened, she talked more about Jesus than she talked about herself. Why? Because now her story was radically changed as she embraced and she came face to face with the Messiah. So finally, uh, out of verse 15, I said, our job is to be a witness. Go give evidence. Don't just try to convince people with your opinions, but in fact, give evidence to why you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, the verse talks about be evidence of what God has uh, told you and taught you. And so that's our job. And I hope this sermon and this message and this text really blessed you and helped equip you to tell your story effectively. I want to turn it over to the house church leader so you guys can discuss.